are under arrest. It was a violent confrontation. Hospital surveillance and police body camera videos, which may have been edited, show a Salt Lake City police officer arresting a nurse in July. Alex Wobbles says Detective Jeff Payne demanded a blood sample from her unconscious patient, a truck driver involved in a fiery crash with a car that was fleeing police. This is something that you guys agreed to with this hospital. Wobbles objects, citing hospital policy that a patient's blood cannot be drawn unless he or she gives consent, has a warrant out for his or her arrest, or is under arrest. Wobble says she was detained for about 20 minutes and released uncharged. Detective Payne says he arrested Wobbles for interfering with an investigation, writing in a police report he needed the blood samples so that it could be determined if the patient had any chemical substances in his system at the time of the crash. I was alarmed by what I saw. The Salt Lake City Police Department has placed Payne and another officer on paid administrative leave pending a criminal investigation. Then walk. Telling NBC News, it's so sad that we've had this rift in our relationship with the medical community, and we're working hard to fix that. Well, we should mention we reached out to Detective Payne for comment, but he did not respond. Alex Wobbles is here. She's with us, along with her attorney, Kara Porter. Good morning to both morning. of you guys. Good morning. Uh, let me start with you, Alex. You know, the, the, the detective and another officer, they're on paid administrative leave right now. Is that enough for you? Um, I can't say that. I'm not, I'm not Chief Payne, or I'm not even Chief Brown. Um, but I'm, I'm not here to police the police. The police need to do that um, if they're going to regain any kind of trust um, by me or, I think, the public. I want to ask you about this video. When we, when we listen to it, sometimes it's hard to watch. You were screaming. There's at one point where you were saying, you know, I've done nothing wrong. This is crazy. And clearly so many people, yeah. uh, frankly, agree with you. Uh, thousands. There's a petition, change.org petition with hundreds of thousands of signatures uh, in support. What has your reaction been to the outpouring of support that you've received? Um, at first, it was maybe be overwhelming as an understatement. Um, but just the gratitude I have and for the support by my colleagues as nurses around the country and the, around, around the world and just healthcare providers in general has been um, amazing. And then just society, I think this resonates with people all over and that's a really unfortunate problem that we have that we have to fix. Um, and I strongly believe that with effective communication and better dialogue between our two um, agencies that we can potentially make this better. If the video had not been made public, do you think that anyone would have been held accountable? Uh, that's hard to say. I, you know, I can't predict that, but I released it because I felt very strongly that um, there needed to be accountability. This happened back on July 26th, though. Why, why just release the video last week? Um, well, it took me a while to really understand that I was in a traumatic experience and I needed that time to sort of give my, my emotions a chance to rest, if you will. and so that I could come out and be pragmatic and be um, effective in my communication. Um, I also feel pretty strongly that uh, the conversations I've had with the Salt Lake City Police Department initially actually were uh, progressive. They, they wanted to walk down a path of positive um, change, but I did not have that same response from the university police and the university security. And so it was sort of a, a little bit of a trigger to say, all right, this is what you need to see. If, if you're not willing to see it, then I'll, I'll show it to you. I think it's the sound, frankly, when I, when I saw the video for the first time of your scream, it was yeah. just so genuine. When, how has this impacted you personally and your, and your family? Um, I mean, my husband and my son are the best. I've come home to them and, and, and my world changes and everything sort of dissipates and goes away. But um, I feel a sense of urgency for this conversation. We need to, we need to make this better. This, this can't be happening. It should never have happened. And, it, and if I have anything to say about it, it won't ever happen again. That, that detective really seemed intent on getting that yeah. sample no matter what. Mm -hmm. Why do we think that was or, or do we know? I have no idea. Um, I personally didn't think there was any sense of urgency. I would have liked uh, for uh, a chance for him to sort of talk with one of his superiors prior to doing what he did to me. Um, I don't know what, what his problem was, if you will. Kara, what do you hope that people learn from all of this? 
Um, a couple of things. Um, one of the reasons that Alex released this video was because most people that this happens to don't have this kind of evidence. Um, and so I, I'm hoping that this helps people out there understand that this kind of thing does happen and can happen to anyone. Are we, are we planning a civil lawsuit? Um, you know, it's not off the table, but Alex has been very clear that her first priority was to try to get change to policies and procedures, things like that. So that's what we have focused on at this stage. And what about you? For you, what do you want to come out of all of this? Um, nothing by any means has been off the table, and I've never once said it what, that it was off the table. Um, but if we in this country, and if I'm going to be able to have effective communication, I feel really strongly that you have to come to the table with a sense of openness and honesty, and um, I would hope the same from the other side. All right. Alex Wobbles, Kira Porter, big thanks to both of you. Thank you. Thank you.